noticed and these aircraft go at a fairly good speed when the wind's behind them but somewhat slower when the wind's in front of them so it takes them a little while to do their circuits. Southwest Pops is a British single-seat biplane fighter aircraft first introduced in 1916 near the midpoint of World War I. The Pop was one of the earliest examples of a highly maneuverable and agile fighter aircraft setting the stage for the future of fighter aircraft design. Its exceptional agility and lightweight construction made it a formidable adversary in dogfights, earning it a reputation as one of the best scout planes of its time. The Sopwith Pup eventually evolved into more advanced models such as the Sopwith Camel and the Sopwith Snipe. This particular Sopwith Pup is painted to represent the aircraft flown by Captain Joseph Stewart Temple Fall, who was born and raised in Cobble Hill near Duncan, B.C. The names on either side of his, his are his two sisters, Betty and Phyllis. Joe Fall joined the uh, Royal Naval Air Service and transferred to the Royal Flying Corps in 1917 and quickly became renowned for his exceptional skills as a fighter pilot. He participated in shooting down over 30 enemy aircraft from the Campbell and Many of them were shared victories and he was awarded a distinguished service cross with two guards, something no other pilot has accomplished. He remained with the Royal Air Force between the wars and in World War II as a group captain in command of the RAF Flying Training School at Carberry, Manitoba. This replica is actually a modern 100% scale replica with one of two built from kits in 2017. This replica, along with the second one that was built, were part of a project called Vimy Flight, where the two Sopwith pups and the SEA-5 were shipped to Vimy Ridge to take part in the activities surrounding the 100-year commemoration of the Battle of Vimy Ridge in the spring of 2017. The second pilot of note was Lloyd Bredner, who was the director of the new RCAF from 1928 to 1932, chief of the air staff from 1940 to 1943, and air officer commander in chief of the RCAF overseas in 1944 and 1945. The SEA-5 is a 7 8 scale replica, it's one of two prototypes designed and built by two new volunteers in 1970. The single, the sister aircraft is in a museum in Ontario. 
Many copies of this aircraft have now been, been, been built. This plane was also taken to France as part of the Vimy Memorial Commemoration. Originally designated the SE-5, it was plagued with teething problems, so several improvements were made, including a more powerful engine and work to increase its maneuverability, which led to the end version of the SE-5A. The SE-5A was armed with a Lewis machine gun mounted on the top wing that fired outside of the airplane's propeller arch, but it also had a 303 Vickers machine gun that fired through the propeller using new technology. With over 5,000 being built combined with its aerial superiority, the SE-5A gained the reputation as an ace maker due to its ability to give pilot the upper hand against their foes. The SE-5A that you see today, as I mentioned, is a 7 8 scale replica. It is being flown today by Tony Walcott. He's been flying for 33 years and has accumulated over 19,000 hours. This, he possesses his Class 1 Flight Instructor Rating and was formerly the Chief Pilot Line Operations Class, flight, class 1 Flight Instructor and was the Chief Pilot in Western Operations for Jazz Aviation on the CRJ-900. Tony also enjoys backcountry flying and gravel bar hopping in his Mall M5 bush plane and has been a volunteer with the Museum of Flight for almost a year, helping with aircraft restorations, coordinating flight operations, and flying several museum aircraft. The Sockwood Pup is being flown by David McIntosh. David McIntosh was a cadet at 111 Pegasus Squadron. Gained his glider license and private license for the aircraft program in 1998 and 1999. He later did his advanced flight training at Coastal Pacific Aviation at the Abbotsford Airport and then went on to flight instruct at SkyQuest Aviation at Langley Airport. He has approximately 5,000 hours of flying time and is a first officer on the Bombardier CRJ-900 at Jazz Aviation flying in Vancouver. In his free time, he flies aerobatics and teaches tail dragger flying. flying.
play will take place as soon as you take them off. Harvard was used as a trainer in over 60 countries and even as a fighter and light fighter bomber in some. Many of the Canadian built Harvards were supplied to other Commonwealth countries and to NATO allies post war. During the war, pilot trainees moved up from simple elementary biplane training aircraft into the Harvard, which introduced them to a more powerful engine, higher speeds, retractable undercarriage, and a controllable pitch propeller. Post-war, in many countries, the Harvard became the first step in a pilot's flying training. Following military service, the Harvard has become a very popular warbird, and hundreds of them are still flying with private owners around the world. The aircraft you're seeing today is a post-war, modernized Mark IV Harvard, one of 555 built at Fort William for the RCAF and the U.S. Air Force. It served in the RCAF from 1952 until 1965 at CFB Penhold, Alberta. Since then, it flew for a while in Ontario and has been here in BC for over 40 years and is a regular performer at air shows around the area. The owner and pilot is John Merzarek, Merzarek, I apologize, a veteran local pilot and air show performer who often flies a two-plane routine with his son Richard in a similarly painted Yak 18T. John is a flying instructor and an ICAS approved aerobatics airshow certificate evaluator in numerous airshow categories. He is a former Transport Canada safety inspector and is still employed in the aviation industry. When John has finished his demonstration, we will resume with the uh, parade, with the uh, inspection.
We're extremely honored to have as our reviewing officer today, Honorary Colonel Stephen Deschamps. Colonel Deschamps was appointed Honorary Colonel of 443 Maritime Helicopter Squadron in Victoria in November of 2022. Colonel Deschamps began his military career as an air cadet at 325 Squadron in Cornwall, Ontario back in 1969. He enrolled in the RCAF in 1979 as a pilot trainee graduated as a top candidate from the Canadian Forces Officer Candidate School in Chilliwack. He was then posted to St. Hubert 10 Tactical Air Group, followed by CFP Porters for Prairie and CFP Moose Jaw. His last regular force posting was at NDHQ in Ottawa. Colonel Deschamps became a victim of the Gay Purge. During the Cold War, paranoia prompted the government to identify and remove suspected LGBTQ military servicemen and women. It was believed that because they had a secret, they were targets for blackmail and breaches of national security, even though there wasn't any evidence to support this. Colonel Deschamps was purged from the CF in July of 1982. He decided to challenge the law. He re-enrolled in the cadet instructor cadre, aiming to table the human rights charter case. The same week he expected to fight a refusal, the famous Michelle Douglas case was settled in federal court, leading to the reversal of the discriminatory practices in the military, and he was readmitted to the RCAF at that time. As a CIC officer at 103 Squadron in North Vancouver, he pioneered the creation of the Computerized Aircraft Simulation Center, or CASC, that provides real pilot simulation to cadets using virtual reality headsets. Colonel Deschamps became commanding officer of 103 Thunderbird Squadron in 1996. He has also been the CO of 858 Skookumchuck Squadron in Seashell, and 848 Royal Roads Squadron in Victoria. In addition, he was the exchange officer for the International Air Cadet Exchange to Australia in both 1993 and 1998. Colonel Deschamps was promoted to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel when he was appointed CO of the Albert Head Air Cadet Summer Training Center on Vancouver Island. Colonel Deschamps was awarded the Canada Pride Citation in 2020 by the Government of Canada in recognition of his valuable service to Canada and the hardship he endured as a result of the historical policies and practices in connection with the purge. Outside of the military, Colonel Deschamps has been Director of Public Affairs of Algonquin College in Ottawa. The spokesman developer for IBM Canada and Vice President of Open Text Corporation. Inspecting the front rank today with Colonel Deschamps was uh, retired Major Ted Bowman, who is currently the Chairman of 879 Earl McLeod Wing of the RCAF Association. Together uh, with him was Ron Winder, representing the Mayor of Delta, and Cadet Wing Commander Chloe Suen, and, and Cadet Wing Warrant Officer Isabella Vasatos. 
the Bravo Squadron was inspected by RAF Flight Lieutenant Chris Perry, who is currently on exchange duty with 419 Squadron at CFP Cold Lake. As an instructor pilot, he is representing the British Consul General. He was accompanied by Lieutenant Colonel Steve Wallace of the Washington Civil Air Patrol and Tom Powell, representing the President of the BC Committee of the Air Cadet League of Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the march past and salute.
We want to be sure to extend a very special welcome to members of the RCAF Association of Canada, the Burma Star, the Royal Canadian Legion, Anavets, the Air Force Officers Association, the Air Crew Association, the Chinese Canadian Veterans Association and Museum Society, the Canadian Peacekeepers Association, and members of the Reserve and Auxiliary Forces, together with all other veterans in attendance this afternoon. We apologize if we fail to specifically recognize any other veterans groups or organizations. Scripture reading by Wes Bowers, our Padre. The Airman's Prayer will be read by Flight Sergeant Gupta of 861 Silver Fox Squadron from Abbotsford. She'll return later this afternoon for the reading of the poem High Flight. So, Mr. Bowers. My name is Wes Bowers. I'm the chaplain for the Air Force Officers Association. Please join me in prayer. Dear God, we have come into your presence on this beautiful day at this historic airport, once known as RCF Station Ladner and later Vancouver Wireless Station, and we are thankful for its great history and great future. We remember with respect the ancestral inhabitants of this land, the Coast Salish First Nations people, who in modern times have put on uniform to defend Canada together with their fellow Canadians. Today we have come together to remember and to give thanks for those brave Canadian and allied airmen and their ground crew during the Battle of Britain who defeated the tyrant and helped re-establish peace in Europe. We are grateful for the example they set of defending freedom, democracy, and the sovereignty of nations. We acknowledge the presence and the friendship of the many citizens who join us today to remember. In Holy Scripture, you have instructed us that if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, 
live at peace with everyone. Sadly, peace is not always possible. Tyrants arise and desire to crush others. We pray that you will come to the aid of Ukraine to restore their sovereignty over all their land and enable them to grow into a strong democracy and valued ally. We are thankful for the young men and young women in Canada's armed forces today and in the armed forces of allied nations who are willing to defend their country and allies. We look at the air cadets on parade today, representing the youth and the future of our country. We ask that you grow them into strong leaders, knowing the difference between right and wrong, good and evil. And when tyranny rises again, this new generation would rise up to defend freedom, democracy, and the sovereignty of nations. Finally, Lord, we remember the words in our national anthem, and we express them as a prayer. God, keep our land glorious and free. Amen. Highly divine, and Lord of all on high, thine are the starry squadrons of the sky. Lead us whose wings for freedom's sake now soar, into our hearts thy faith and courage pour. Oh, hear our prayer, set thou our course whose trust is laid in thee. O oh, thou who chartest of all eternity, through cloud and sunshine, through darkest nights, guide thou our wings through battle for the right. Oh, hear our prayer. Father and friend, in whose almighty name we dedicate our lives to freedom's flame. Bless now our wings as on through space we wend. Bless us, who to thy care our souls commend. Oh, hear our prayer. Thank you, Flight Sergeant Gupta. I would now like to ask Colonel Deschamps to address the parade. I've been known on occasion when these ceremonies drag on to take my speech out and rip it up. And that usually makes for a great delight for everybody on parade. But I've tailored the speech today, and I've made sure that it's less than five minutes. Mesdames, Mademoiselles et Messieurs, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, most importantly, the air cadets of Lower Mainland in British Columbia. Bonjour. As we stand here today, we commemorate a time when young aviators were called upon to defend freedom. We are here to remember the Battle of Britain, a monumental time in history when young, not much older than you, stood up against overwhelming odds. Like you, they were determined, passionate, and ready to serve. The skies over England were filled with young aviators like yourselves, who took to the air in World War II displaying courage and resolve that will never be forgotten. Sir Winston Churchill, the great wartime Prime Minister of England during the Second World War said, never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. And he was right. The teenage pilots of the Royal Air Force, the Royal Canadian Air Force, and many other Commonwealth countries embodied courage, dedication, and sacrifice. 
ces pilotes n'étaient pas des héros super ni des légendes. C'étaient des jeunes hommes et femmes, des adolescents, confrontés par des peurs, des doutes et d'énormes difficultés et défis. These pilots were not superheroes or legends. They were young men and women, teenagers, who faced fears, doubts, and enormous challenges. Just like you, they were learning, growing, and discovering who they could be. Their determination and commitment continues to inspire us today. As Sir Winston Churchill said, we shall defend our island whatever the cost may be. These words resonate with your own dedication to excellence, commitment to service, and pursuit of personal growth. The aviators of Battle of Britain were not just fighting for their country. They were fighting for the world. They were fighting for freedom, for peace, for the right to dream and build a future without fear. They were everyday people, thrust into extraordinary circumstances. Just as you are, extraordinary individuals, preparing for whatever life may throw your way. 443 Royal Canadian Air Force Squadron, my squadron, played a significant role in World War II, engaging in numerous air battles and supporting Allied ground forces at D-Day, flying the Spitfire aircraft. Their valor and determination were second to none. They were our few. Today, 443 Maritime Helicopter Squadron flies a silicone helicopter from the decks of the Royal Canadian Navy ships here on the West Coast. And now I look at you, the air cadets of today, young women and men eager to learn, to serve, and to advance. The world is a troubled place, and we need people like you. Strong, committed, and compassionate individuals. May we never forget the courage it took the, and the sacrifices made, and the lives forever changed and lost during the blitzkrieg over London and England. May we also remember that each of us has a role to play, not just in moments of great conflict, but in our daily lives. Just as the Battle of Britain was won day by day, so too do we shape our world with our daily actions and decisions. Tout comme la bataille d'Angleterre a été gagnée jour après jour, nous façonnons également notre monde par nos actions et nos décisions quotidiennes. You stand at the threshold of greatness, ready to make your mark. The pilots of Battle of Britain left a legacy that continues to inspire us. Now it's your turn. You have the potential to make as significant a contribution to the world as those teenage, pe those teenage pilots did in the Battle of Britain. Embrace your potential. Believe in yourselves and fly high. The sky is not the limit, it's the beginning. As we conclude today's ceremony, let this be your takeoff point. The courage and spirit of those teenage pilots during the Battle of Britain lives in each and one of you. So let your dreams soar, let your passions ignite, and let your actions make a difference. The world awaits your greatness, and we all believe in your ability. And may your dreams take flight. Merci. Thank you, Colonel Deschamps. We sincerely appreciate you taking time to be with us today. In September of 1941, Pilot Officer John Gillespie McGee, Jr., was an American serving with 412 Squadron of the RCAF when he wrote one of the most famous and beloved poems about the ecstasy of flying. Sadly, he was killed less than three months later. Flight Sergeant Gupta from 861 Silver Fox Squadron will now read the poem 
high flight. Thank you, sir. Oh, I have slipped the surly bonds of earth and danced the skies on laughter's silvered wings. Sunward I've climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sun-split clouds and done a hundred things you have not dreamed of, wheeled and soared and swung high in the sunlight silence. Hovering there, I've chased the shouting wind along and flung my eager craft through footless halls of air. Up, up the long, delirious, burning blue, I've topped the wind-swept heights with easy grace. Where never lark or even eagle flew, and while with silent, lifting minds I've trod the high, untrespassed sanctity of space, put out of my hand and touched the face of God. Thank you. I will now read the act of remembrance. For those of you who are familiar with it, please join in. Comrades of the Air Forces, we, your comrades, here do, in this solemn act of remembrance, remember you. We call you by name. But, sir, these comrades cannot answer. For as much as these comrades do not answer, let their names live forevermore. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remain standing for the last post. And after After a minute of silence, we will hear the lament, and the bugler will sound rouse.
The bugler will now sound gross. I'd like to ask Padre West Bowers to return to the dais for the final prayer and benediction. I will share with you as a benedictory prayer a very ancient benediction, thousands of years old. Every bit as applicable today as it was then. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you Mark, you can continue with the balance of the parade, please. Please be seated.
You can be seated now, thank you. Veterans, ladies and gentlemen, cadets, thank you very much for joining us today for this 83rd Battle of Britain commemorative parade. After this parade, we suggest that you take a few moments to visit the Cenotaph in front of the terminal building and the memorial pathway to pay tribute to those members of the RCAF who lost their lives while flying out of Boundary Bay Airport. Also inside the terminal building are several display cases with more than a hundred hand-built models of various aircraft. The models were built by Dan Ryan, a member of 801 Vancouver Wing of the RCAF Association of Canada. We also want to express our thanks and appreciation to Alpha Aviation, the operators of Bounty Bay Airport, together with the other residents, tenant businesses, and aircraft operators here at Boundary Bay Airport. For their patience during the disruption to the normal routines. As a reminder to everyone, 2024 is the 100th anniversary of the RCAF. And there will be a number of parades taking place, including this one next September, that will have uh, components honoring the 100 years of service. We welcome you to all of those events. We wish everyone a safe trip home. Thank you for joining us today.